For today's video, we are going to talk about what is limits and we are going to find out how to find the limits of the given expression. First, let us define what is a limit. So when we say limits, it is the value that the function or sequence approaches as the input approaches to some value. So as you can see, we have the general form for limits that is limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l. So let's have an example. On the first example, we have limit of x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2 as x approaches to 2. So if we substitute the value of x, what would be the value of the given limit? So let's say f of 2, that is x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2. So the value of x is 2, let's say 2 squared minus 4 over 2 minus 2 2 raised to 2 that is 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2 so we have 4 minus 4 is 0 and 2 minus 2 is 0 therefore if we substitute the value of x we don't have a specific value for the given limit but if we are going to have a table let's say x and f of x and if we are going to set for the value of x which is closer to 2 let's say we have 1.9 that is 1.9 square minus 4 all over 1.9 minus 2 so if we plug in this one in your calculator we are going to have 3.9 so let's try 3.9 so let's try another value for x which is more closer to 2 Let's say 1.99. So let's have 1.99 square minus 4 all over 1.99 minus 2. So if we are going to simplify this one, we are going to have 3.99. So let's try another value of x which is more closer to 2 and let's see what happened. So let's say 1.999. So let's have 1.999 square minus 4 all over 1.999 minus 2. So if we plug in this one in your calculator, we have 3.999. So as you can see, for the value of x, as x approaches to 2, the given expression x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2 approaches to 4. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have limit of x cubed minus 27 all over x minus 3 as x approaches to 3. So if we are going to substitute the value of x, which is 3, what will be the value of the given limit? So let's say f of 3, that is x cubed minus 27 all over x minus 3. And the value of x is 3. Let's say we have 3 cubed minus 27 all over 3 minus 3. 3 raised to 3, that is 27 minus 27 all over 3 minus 3. 27 minus 27 is 0, and 3 minus 3 is also 0. So therefore, we can say that if x equals to 3, we don't have the specific value for the given limit. But if we are going to have a table, let's say x and f of x, and we are going to set for the value of x, which is closer to 3, let's say we have 2.9, what would be the value of f of x? So if we have 2.9 raised to 3 minus 27 all over 2.9 minus 3. So if you are going to plug in this one in your calculator, we are going to have 26.11. So let's try 26.11. So let's try another value of x which is closer to 3. Let's say 2.9. 
So if we are going to substitute this one, we are going to have 2.99 raised to 3 minus 27 all over 2.99 minus 3. So in your calculator, if we simplify this one, we are going to have 26.91. So let us try 26.91. So let's try another value of x which is closer to 3. So let's say 2.999. Let's see what happened. So let's have 2.999 raised to 3 minus 27 all over 2.999 minus 3. So if we plug in this one in your calculator, we are going to have 26.99. Notice that if x approaches to 3, the given expression x cubed minus 27 all over x minus 3 approaches to 27. So this will be the value of the given limit. On example number 3, we have limit of x squared plus 7x plus 3 as x approaches 3. So if we have f of x equals x square plus 7x plus 3 and if the value of x is 3 we are going to have 3 square plus 7 times 3 plus 3 3 square that is 9 plus 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 that is 9 plus 21 plus 3 that is 33 so this will be the value of the given limit on example number 4, we have limit of x squared minus 3x plus 7 all over x plus 2 as x approaches to 5. So if we have x squared minus 3x plus 7 all over x plus 2, and if we have the value of x which is 5, that is 5 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 7 all over 5 plus 2. So let us simplify. We have 5 square is 25. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Plus 7. All over 5 plus 2. That is 7. So 25 minus 15. That is 10. Plus 7. All over 7. 10 plus 7 is 17. Over 7. So this will be our answer. On example number 5, we have limit of square root of x plus 7 all over x plus 1 as x approaches to 2. So if we have f of x, that is square root of x plus 7 all over x plus 1. And if the value of x is 2, that is square root of 2 plus 7 over 2 plus 1, that is square root of 2 plus 7 is 9, and then 2 plus 1, that is 3, and the square root of 9 is 3, divide by 3, that is 1. So this will be our answer. On example number 6, we have limit of sine x as x approaches to pi over 4. So if we have sine x, and if the value of x is pi over 4, that is sine pi over 4. So let us convert pi over 4 into degrees. That is pi over 4 times 180 degrees over pi. So let us cancel pi. And we have 180 degrees divided by 4. That is 45 degrees. And this will be the value of pi over 4 in degrees. So we have here sine pi over 4 that is 45 degrees and sine 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2 and this will be our answer on example number 7 we have limit of tangent x as x approaches to pi over 3 so if we have tangent x 
And if the value of x is pi over 3, we have tangent pi over 3. So let us convert pi over 3 into degrees. That is pi over 3 multiplied by 180 degrees over pi. So let us cancel pi. That is 180 degrees over 3. That is 60 degrees. And this will be the value of pi over 3 in degrees. So let's have tangent 60 degrees. And we all know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So if we have tangent 60 degrees, we are going to have sine 60 degrees over cosine 60 degrees. And sine 60 degrees, that is square root of 3 over 2. And cosine 60 degrees is 1 half. So let us cancel 2. And we have square root of 3 divided by 1. That is square root of 3. And this will be our answer. On our last example, we have limit of second x as x approaches to pi over 6. So if we have second x, and if the value of x is pi over 6, that is second x pi over 6. So let us convert pi over 6 in degrees, that is pi over 6 multiplied by 180 degrees over pi. So let us cancel pi. And we have 180 degrees divided by 6 is 30 degrees. And this will be the value of pi over 6 in degrees. So let's have second 30 degrees. Since second is 1 over cosine. So if we have second 30 degrees, we are going to have 1 over cosine 30 degrees. And cosine 30 degrees, that is square root of 3 over 2. So let us simplify. 1 multiplied by 2, that is 2 over square root of 3. And let us Rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3 to eliminate the radical sign. That is, 2 times square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. And this will be our answer. So I hope you will learn from this lesson. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.